Yart was good. I'm gonna start doing NFL because why not? I'm a Dolphins fan and Jonathan Taylor has been getting chirped about getting picked up by the Dolphins, but they're also asking for Waddle. To be honest, which I'm hearing is ridiculous from people, you know? Like people are like, why, why wouldn't you accept that deal if you're gonna get Jonathan Taylor? And it's like, dog, he's just coming back from an injury. Tua has probably the best wide receiving core in the NFL right now. We don't really need Jonathan Taylor. We have a decent running core. We don't want to give up a major piece to get somebody that a team that, like needs to get rid of. We're better decision making than we've made in a long time for trades and free agents. We like to get the fucking splash and first time in a little while that I haven't seen it. Here's my boy. He's been doing this so long. All right, Laura, Jonathan Taylor was not traded by the four o'clock Eastern deadline today. And not right. only was he not traded, but the Colts have left him on the physically unable to perform in the next wow. window to trade him. That's kind of fucked up. For the NFL's cut down day or the trade deadline on Halloween, October hmm. 31st. The next window would be in the off season when they would just put the franchise tag on him and hope to trade him then. Why, why just make him the highest paid running back at that point? Just let him go. God, I feel so bad for him not being able to play. It's one thing to have your shit like rock. We'll get into, I'm obviously going to do week one predictions after this. I'm just going to do this uh, for a brief moment in time. Because honestly, Gardner's been playing kind of nice. Sam's playing, huh? But yeah, Anthony Richardson to me, right? Like a little bit more active of a quarterback. And I would imagine going to be more of a focus of their franchise rather than building around Jonathan Taylor. And I actually, like, I think that's good for the Colts, quite frankly. Poor Jonathan Taylor doesn't even get, to, like, he can't even get snaps and prove people that he's healthy. I think Indianapolis would like to try to win back his respect, support, right. love, and keep him in Indianapolis. But that's something that Jonathan Taylor has been adamantly opposed to. Uh, yeah, and again, if I'm the Dolphins, I ain't accepting that offer. But if I'm the Colts, I understand you're going to ask for a lot. Because he's worth a lot. But the problem is, is right now he's worth nothing to you. So to be petty, you're going to make a young guy incapable of doing his job and playing football and proving to people that he's still capable to give him the trade value that you're asking for. It sucks, for man. Like, poor Jonathan the Taylor. The four games of the season with no trade materializing today being on the pup designation he was on there before this is a uh, trade done. this is a crazy a ratio trade done, probably a deal done then he's cleared he's back playing for another team there's going to be a lot of interest in jonathan taylor a lot of teams are going to be interested in jonathan taylor everybody's going to be interested so I think why wouldn't you be he's said, he's probably a top five running back if not definitely a top five running back in the nfl i mean every team would get better if they added him at acquisition but again it's right now the colts are really just stopping and have in my opinion unrealistic expectation while he's a top five running back you can't ask for a top 10 wide receiver and a bunch of picks like a, a top option on a team and a bunch of picks like it's kind of like one or the other when someone doesn't want to be on your team i mean aaron aaron Rodgers is a far cry from a good example right but this is somebody who didn't want to be on his team and is a top 10 quarterback in the nfl right which is more or can be considered a little bit more of a influential spot so the packers get uh, a first round pick a fifth round pick a first round pick oh and they traded a first round pick back i'm sorry so i mean if you look at what the packers got they got fucking jack shit for like one of the best quarterbacks in the nfl and i don't think he's gonna play fantastic on the jet but now that he got replaced it seems like zach wilson like actually understands the situation and it's kind of cool that aaron Rodgers is like hey we're gonna toss the torch back to him maybe after seems like at least more amicable when it's done a little bit like that you know but i guess my point being while jonathan taylor's upside is much higher than obviously like aaron Rodgers in a trade scenario when you're basically swapping picks with the jets and you're the packers giving up your starting quarterback that's a little rough you know but that guy didn't want to be on your team you gotta move him on Okay, cool. This is going to get handled quickly. This situation, he will get traded for. Bang, he's out of there. We'll get something in return. Whether it's picks, whether it's a player, of course. whatever it is, how a trade works, yeah. we thought as Colts fans, <laughs> we got our best player out of the building who doesn't want to be there. Although it would be better if he was all in and playing for the of Colts. Of course, and if it, that's your... We're going to get something back in return. Something. Not the world, right? But also, uh, I think it's interesting. I think that's more the mentality is like, let's keep this guy incapable of playing football until we could just make him the highest paid athlete in the NFL next year. The, the way that Scheffner broke it down, it's like 
kind of fucked. Let's, let's take this guy, some of this guy's best years of football away from him. His opportunity to sell himself away from him. I mean, he's underpaid as shit, right? So maybe it's nice to sit and watch. Like, he should have already gotten a contract. But the fact that they're going to wait him out on PUP and then offer him a franchise tag one year to get paid the most is actually kind of insulting. So now we're hearing that no Why would he ever want to made. stay? And another team that was in there allegedly other than Dolphins is Green Bay Packers. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So Green Bay... And I think that's a smarter fit because you could just swap, I would imagine, Dylan for Jonathan Taylor or uh, I guess even Aaron Jones, who's a different style back. Well, how, how one of those weren't enough for the Colts? The AJ Dillon would be who they were trying yeah, to Yeah, and the I got the Packers reporter that from Thank you. Uh, so that's what I was looking for was Barry Jackson. Because, again, as a Dolphins fan, I just, like, how are you, how you asking for not just Waddle? How was it Waddle and more? Waddle would have been like, ugh, but okay. We could, if we if we win the conference, if we win the division, I get that trade if you move on from Waddle. And that'd be, that'd be awesome for Richardson. That'd be awesome for Waddle. I think that'd be awesome for the Colts. But <laughs> it, as a Dolphins fan, I'm like, oh, we have, like, such a good wide receiving court. The Dolphins right now with Mike McDaniel are playing offense like I play, like, Madden. <laughs> you know, they're like, let's just stack it with, like, the most young, unbelievable talent possible. Not that Jonathan Taylor isn't young. If he's a, like, if he'd stay on the Dolphins, that's another thing, too. But I, I don't know if he would. So we're just going to break it down. We're going to go game by game. Week one predictions now. I hope Jonathan Taylor gets to play football. I hope Joe Burrow gets to play football, which will be coming at. I could only really tell you who's starting for sure week one based off of what I've seen in the preseason and so on. I'm filming this on Sunday, so by the time the Lions and Chiefs play, it'll be four or five days from now. You know what I mean? I don't quite know. First down to try and get. <laughs> yeah. I think I think this is a season Isaiah Pacheco explodes. I think this is a season Patrick Mahomes finds other wide receiving core options that you've never heard of. Maybe even Juju steps up. I don't know if he's still on the Chiefs. Let me see. Oh, he's on the Patriots. Snap. Yeah, I love Andy Reid. He's honestly, uh, arguably, in my opinion, one of the greatest coaches to ever do it, but doesn't really get the love that he deserves. And I think it's just because he's in, like, Bumblefuck, Kansas City. No disrespect to Kansas City, obviously. They have the probably the best quarterback in football and arguably the most tested at his age other than maybe joe who unfortunately is dealing with health he obviously has a great old line travis kelsey's got people trying to support him aiden hutchinson and james houston houston went on a tear last year when he finally made the team and ended with eight sacks in just seven games I, th I think the Chiefs' offensive line holds up, quite frankly. While they do have a good defense in the Lions, I, and I actually think the Lions have been playing better than people give them credit, especially defensively, I, I don't think they beat the Chiefs on a Thursday. Now, that's usually when upsets like that happen, too, don't mind. Like, I, if I remember correctly and my memory serves me correctly, most upsets tend to happen on a Thursday night before the season even starts when people aren't kind of, like, getting those gears in motion yet. It, it is still new, but again, I think doing it to Patrick Mahomes is going to be harder than ever, especially if you're Jared Goff. Hurried Mahomes, <laughs> Kez Valdez, Scantling, close. He's going to have a fucking huge game, I think, and honestly, a huge season. I think this is going to be a season where he's like all of a sudden, like, now I don't want to say wide receiver one conversations, but like Marquez Valdez Scatling is like a perfect slot wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs to get not just these numbers, but I think he's going to like explode this season because it's like there's no Juju, there's no Tyreek, so it's like, who is it? You know? Other than Kelsey, who obviously had all those other fucking numbers. You get him to go the opposite way of Kelsey, you got who are you doubling? You like, oh, got Marquez Valdez grabbing it, no problem. To the 30. And Sky Moore. A four -yard touchdown. Yeah, Sky Moore. All these guys are so fucking young. That, yeah, exactly. That's my. That's a great question. Is does anybody emerge as wide receiver one? I think it's either. I, I think Sky Moore is honestly more of a slot than Valdez Scat. Like, God, that's so interesting. I don't think they keep a wide receiver one. I just think they keep a bunch of twos and threes, and that's honestly a good way to play football too. Uh, especially if you have Patrick Mahomes, who will get it there anyway. If you have a bunch of people who are serviceable that you don't need to double. Like, yeah, I mean, they're just gonna double Travis, unfortunately. A Maybe Sky it works. You know? I don't. I, I really. All those people that he mentioned. Well, not. Not the biggest name on the planet. I do trust so pretty wholeheartedly. A lot of to be chasing with these gents. I think Isaiah Pacheco 
has the game, though. I think people are going to expect a lot of passing out of Patrick Mahomes. To, and I think he'll hit Kelsey a couple times. I think he'll hit Scatling. I think he'll hit Sky Moore. I don't His think people are expecting Isaiah Pacheco to, like, explode like the way he is. Isaiah uh, and maybe it's just because he, he went to Rutgers. Maybe it's just because I'm rooting for the jersey in me. I, I think this man fucking explodes this Pacheco. year. He was a hair He's like a top five running back to me this Under year. five a run as a rookie. Especially without a wide receiver Isaiah one. Steps to his right, throws, end zone, touchdown! And I think Amon Ross St. Brown is going to explode on an offensive standpoint with Jared Goff. I don't think it's going to be enough to beat the Chiefs because I think Isaiah Pacheco is going to run all over him, quite frankly. I think the, the D-line rush is going to come at Patrick Mahomes, but they're going to be able to split it up, especially with Gosh, their O-line. I don't want to rant too long on each game, but I just wanted to check if there were any outlooks on this, I guess, that I was missing. I'm going to, I guess, pick a score, but, like, will it ever be correct? I, you know, I don't think it's even going to be that high scoring of a game, quite frankly. I think the Lions defense will hold up a little bit. Um, and again, I think it, I would imagine it being a lot of running from the Chiefs and a lot more than people expect. I think it's more like like 24-30, ironically enough. I, I'd agree with these guys. NFL regular season yeah. debut. Love the way Bryce Young stood in the pocket. Went. And like, honestly, it's bright. I don't watch a lot of college football, so I don't know a lot about Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young will do all right, but like, there's not really a huge culture to be setting yourself into if you're him. And I think Bryce Young, well, not a bad quarterback. I don't want to like compare him to like Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm trying to like, like Jacoby Brissett, people who could like probably get it done wherever they are, realistically, like without the right wide receiving core and without the right offensive system, I don't know if it works. I don't know if this is a great fit yet. Young to face out. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is it is one of the worst defenses in the league last year. So uh, I mean, I don't know if they change much. Young and company mm -hmm. aren't facing your grandma's foul. Bud Dupree. Oh, Bud Dupree, Dupree as well is kind of nice. You know, like that is. A lot. Oh, but Adam Thaglin. Uh, that's crazy. He's gonna go off, man. Khan had over seven. He's like so understated. Obviously, like you get Justin Jefferson, you're gonna need to pay Justin Jefferson. But I think that's actually a really smart pickup from the Panthers. I didn't even know they got him. I mean, we'll see if it works. But he's like a perfect dump off wide receiver, and he knows what to do. If he's been catching passes from Kirk Cousins the last five years, no disrespect to Kirk, but like he's DJ Chark, another new. They got DJ Chark too, so they so they drafted a quarterback and surrounded him with the shits. I fuck with DJ Chark. DJ Chark is probably on my list of like underrated, but like can get the shits done. It, it was the Jaguars, obviously, is where I know him from, and he had that like one explosive game, obviously, like early on, and has been serviceable since. But I just don't think he fit Trevor Lawrence's play style. Bryce Young, a young quarterback. If there's an O line in front of me, which I haven't heard anything about yet, that gives me access to Adam Thielen and it gives me access to maybe like a deep one-on-one uh, -on -one ball to DJ Chark. I am mad. Over 500 yards in Detroit in 2022. His targets to a low 90s rate, respectable yeah. enough. I mean, Jeff Okuda is a huge, huge line. deal. The other way. I didn't realize he was on the, is he on the Falcons? Atlanta's hoping 2022 is I want AJ Terrell is hard too. Yeah, honestly, I think AJ Terrell locks up Thielen. So I don't uh it's it's like DJ Chark to me. Well, and Miles Sanders had a monster year Whoa. in Philadelphia. Super I I think he's a good dump off option too. Interesting. God, the Panthers are so new. Panthers just like completely rebuilt. John Robinson. Sees the cut. Look out. His and I do think maybe they run the ball a lot if I'm the Falcons, you know. I mean, yeah, you got a young rookie last year in Tyler Allegier. Oh, my God. And you got Corderell still, too, who honestly is, uh, I'm still shocked to see his running back. And it's Desmond Ritter throwing it's to people, ball. so. Touchdown Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. He has a nice wide receiver to work with. Drake yeah, Drake London's nice, but, like, honestly, Desmond Ritter was, like, a little rough when I saw him playing. Obviously, he gets to, like, practice now. And you get Kyle Pitts, too. You know, you get Drake London. People that you've been gelling with. Ah, God, who do I think would win this game? It's like tighter than people are going to give it credit. The Panthers squeak it out against the Falcons, if especially if Jeff Okuda plays. Because I think the Panthers' new offense is going to gel and it's going to work out. So long as AJ Terrell gets maybe paired up against DJ Chark uh, and not against Adam Thielen, who will otherwise just get locked up for the rest of the game. And there's going to be a lot of Miles Sanders if that's the case. But I still think the Panthers get it done. It's like a tight game. I'm going to call it like 24 14 uh, Carolina. Wow, I'm the only person giving it to Carolina. These guys like agree with me on scores. It's funny. I don't know who these guys are, but they like must be like fucking the most idiotic people if I'm. <laughs> 
I'm matching them. I agree with basically them, except I'd give it to the Panthers. They gel and figure it out on the on the luck of it being a first one o'clock game. You blend it in. It's not the greatest defense uh, last year. I don't want to say they don't have a wide receiver one because Thielen was a wide receiver one and it worked out. I'd want like someone who like demands two people on him uh, rather than Jeff Okuda and AJ Terrell like covering separate people. I think that to me is a defensive difference. I obviously don't know the future. Move on. The Houston to Texans head the northeast Texans to Baltimore and the Ravens. for week one. Buzz in Baltimore all off season. New offensive coordinator, new opponent. Yeah, so they got Lamar, right? And then I think they got Earth, Odell. Lamar Speaking passes. of Odell fewer Lamar runs fires across the middle Andrews has it at the five turn I felt bad that he's he's someone like Jonathan Taylor who got played ball. with for a grip Beckham, yeah Odell's big deal I, I actually, we'll watch the Odell from the side because I think especially like he hops on wins a bowl he's, he's sweating less he just wants to prove it the other Beckham, way now the guy expected to make their new approach work both this year and this week versus the Texans and he's still got the shits it's just he doesn't need football anymore to make money Literally, for what it is to me, is yes, I, I like Lamar too, NFL. Come on now, who's the running back? J.K. Dobbins. Okay. I don't hate J.K. Dobbins. I think he's been extremely unhealthy. I'm actually unprecedented here. I'm going gonna, gonna to look up the Ravens roster. Actually, I'm going to do the depth chart, not the roster. Gus Ed. Yeah. If I'm a Ravens fan, I'm not incredibly happy with the depth. Now, Nelson Aguilar is going to go off. Mark Andrews, as long as he's healthy, he's cool um and i like jk as just jk is he ever going to be healthy they have a great defense i love rocky sin you know uh, oh my god like uh, michael pierce you know i think they'll be fine they're a very they're they're a franchise that doesn't change very much and never really has changed very much honestly they they pass the torch from flacco to lamar so smoothly as far as like franchise quarterback other than obviously all the playing with lamar jackson's time and money and for that matter health i think the ravens are a type of team that like just it's hard to bet against especially against like a new look texans team you know i like cj stroud i agree that he's an x factor i think robert woods is a great wide receiver don't get me wrong it's just who is this man passing to okay john met Okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who didn't even play last season. I like John Mechie, but like, because I like CJ Stroud, but like, if he's only throwing Robert Woods, who I like, and Robert Woods will probably play like nuts, you know, like Robert Woods will probably like ball out. I'm so sorry for CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud is like getting ass to be shit on. I like Devin Singletary, and is Damon Pierce just a rookie? Yeah. Yeah, man. If I was the Texans, I'd be fucking selling house to get Jonathan Taylor personally. Ship him a little bit down the road, and all of a sudden, you and CJ Stroud and Jonathan Taylor make some I'll leave some happen. You, the fans. You can put them in the. But it might not have been on Jonathan Taylor's panel, list. Damn, the panel does not believe in the Texans. I do not either. I get. I didn't give a score, but yeah, it's it's not going to be the Texans, unfortunately. I think the Texans are another key player away, offensively especially, from making some shit happen. I think they're they're going to get another high pick next year, and I could be wrong. I like Robert Woods a lot. I don't think he's number one though with a rookie quarterback. I don't want to like steal a score, but uh, MJD is looking all right. I like Maurice Jones Drew, so we're just gonna we're just gonna rock with him. He knows about football for sure. So I'm gonna I've made a song about Joe Burrow. We're now gonna spit on Joe. We're not spit on Joe, but hopefully Joe starts playing football. I don't know if Bro is is doing all right. Hopefully he is. He's day to day at this moment. Then getting a nice check, but he's owed a bigger one, and he can't risk his future in any sense of the word, without having that done. And, and I think that's basically Jonathan Taylor and a lot of athletes' perspective. The people who are paying them are literally people who will never see the field. Or they're people who show up occasionally for games or like, <laughs> like the, for instance, like the Jets is owned by the guy who owns like Johnson & Johnson. Joe Burrow asking for money. Might be like, oh my God, is this rich guy asking for money? It's like, no, it's this even richer guy not giving it to him. <laughs> I think what Joy speaking of though, let me educate the viewer though, two issues. There are two issues at play. And I, and I didn't do a good enough job clarifying this. There is the money issue yeah. because Joe Burrow has yet to be paid right. and there is the health issue because joe burrow might be healthy enough yeah. to right. take the field I'm about to week one yeah. so I actually went to school in Ohio, so I could speak a little bit on this Ohio rivalry as well, because this is going to be a heated game regardless. But if Joe Burrow does not play week one, how Cincinnati doesn't offer that man a contract is crazy. No matter what that man's health is, he's your franchise. Build an indoor practice facility. Cleveland and Cincinnati, I like both. And I think the X factor is Joe. If Joe takes the field, Cincinnati takes it, quite frankly. I think Cincinnati built for the Super Bowl. Joe's ready to take it, but he's not going to risk his health to do it. He could do it for another team if he's not going to get paid by the hometown team that drives 
drafted him number one overall and brought them to a Super Bowl. Pay the man, you are insane. Now, I actually was closer to Cleveland uh, and Canton, for that matter, in Ohio. While it, uh, where I was, it sided toward the Browns, obviously because they're not the most uh, franchised winning. I think the Browns are going to have to do it when the spotlight is no longer on them to be fantastic. The fact that they're in the conversation to be a playoff team all the time now, as opposed to like always being the worst team in the NFL is pretty great. I don't fuck with Deshaun Watson. I don't really fuck with the Even energy Browns or the vibe of them right now. A and interstate rivalry. I like Miles Garrett, but like, Bengals are in town. I think it's been no some mismanagement. Waiting. Browns defense should get to see where it stands defending the pass. He's got team. such a wide receiving core. I'm going to have to assume he plays. Last year, five different times, playoffs yeah. included. Cincinnati this, yeah, this is a man who has he has not had his health cared for by the organization either by putting people in front of him that could like protect him. Holy shit. And man, is he doing the most with the least in the NFL right now. He is like the second he came into the league, he had an unbelievable pressure to like build a team that by the way had no identity prior to Joe Burrow. And not only did he give him an identity, but people are talking about them being the best team in the NFL frequently and this man was born in cincinnati i believe or if not ohio and was like literally it seems like programmed and born to do this <laughs> and how they are not paying this man or protecting this man at all like they don't you won't give this man an indoor practice facility and you can't give him an offensive line like brothers <laughs> how how broke are you who owns, the, I gotta see who owns the Bengals. Mike Brown, hey the man. And I love Don Shula, look at my boy. You know what I mean? Like, speaking of, speak of the Dolphins, I, I like pay the man, brother, where's your bread? Where's your money at? Yeah, I'm looking for like how we got his money. It's like so fucking hush apparently. Oh, he's the son of the actual, okay. That makes more sense. Like an ancient guy who's like been a part of it. Okay, that's like old football money <laughs> in that case. Like if you were part of the NFL before it was like extremely monetized, holy shit. The fact that he's that old as like a trust fund kid is crazy. <laughs> Not to say that it's like trust fund kid because obviously that's like actual smart investment. And, like, a lot of blue-collar workers were in the NFL at the time. Yeah, I think Jamari Chase goes off. I think, honestly, uh, while the Browns have a tremendous defense, Joe Burrow plays, they have a hard time of locking them up. If I'm the Bengals, you're not, if, yeah, it's really simple. Just pay, pay, pay Joe Burrow, the guy who's transformed our team. And if I'm the Browns, I'm praying that Amari Cooper and Deshaun Watson find a way to gel. Quite frankly, hope that Deshaun Watson stops gelling in everybody anyway. What the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Why is he on the yeah, Bengals side? But real quick, remember. Th I, I think this is for sure Bengals. This? Personally, most people are picking the Bengals as well. I honestly, I was about to say 24-20, um, but we'll call it 27-20. Uh, I think that's more likely. All right, moving on to the Jaguars and the Colts. Speaking of the Colts, again, I think they're honestly a team that it's going to take half of a season to figure it out. Once they do figure it out, they'll become a threat. If Jonathan Taylor sees that they're contending without him and decides to play or uh, decides to sign or they decide, like, if they decide to come to terms, whatever it be. New head coach, uh, a new QB. The that's, that's the problem for me is a new head coach. Not that I dislike the head coach. I honestly just don't know jack shit about him and until you start winning some games i'm not gonna learn it i think trevor lawrence honestly dots up uh, i think this is a a playoff defining a career defining season for trevor lawrence personally i i, I think quite frankly he was better than he got credit for last year and we'll be able to fly under the radar for the front half of the season as being as successful as he can be I think he's got a great wide receiving core between Evan Ingram. Uh, we'll see who else they, they're going to pop up on here. Christian Kirk, I love. He had a fantastic season last year. Career-defining season for him, which we'll see how he deals with double coverage now. I think when he got double covered, he got shut down. But so long as there are other people like Zay Jones to pop up for it and continue to pop up, or perhaps Calvin Ridley to maintain a wide receiver one, or perhaps uh, the concern level. Uh, to me, they read a little bit building like how the Chiefs are building an offense, where it's like, let's get a bunch of wide receiver twos and people that they don't know who they have to double cover uh, and have Trevor Lawrence dot them up deep every once in a while, otherwise just slot a capable running back behind us. Travis Etienne, I think also going to continue, as long as he stays healthy, continue to have a very big, competent career in Jacksonville. I mean, we'll see how Anthony Richardson does. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to stack up against that defense personally. I mean, it is going to be a close game. It's definitely going to be Jacksonville. I'm just trying to decide how many points 
the Colts might score. Let's say like, uh, yeah, Pittman. I'm trying to like see who they're throwing to. I, I like Pittman, but like he's not a wide receiver one. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go Jacksonville 30, Colts uh, 10. MJD, dude, me and you are on a vibe, brother. And he knows ja he knows the Jags might be a little biased. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa hit the and Minnesota. This is like a game I like. This is like a multiverse of two teams I've like not Road thought about. I love Justin Jefferson. He's going to probably have a incredible season to remain the number one wide receiver in the NFL. Got it! No way! I mean, for the 2015 if Justin Jefferson is exploding like this with Kirk Cousins, <laughs> not that again, Kirk, I think gets these numbers, not just because of Justin Jefferson, but like Adam Thielen. We'll see how he goes with like less options. TJ, you know what? I fuck with TJ and they got a first round pick. Uh, we'll see how he goes. I like KJ Osborne. I think there's a good wide receiving core, but I think Justin Jefferson is like double covered all the time. And if these other guys have the options or have the space, they'll go. But if they don't have the space, I think they're going to struggle in coverage. I just, I need a slot option and then I need a physical option. Uh, and TJ is a physical uh, option, KJ but Osborne. they could also and it's the regular season debut. Not, their... To me, they haven't quite gelled. I literally, I could not tell you who's still, like, who is even the quarterback of the Buccaneers right now. If it's everybody else is the same and they replace the quarterback with somebody capable, <laughs> well, we'll see if he's capable. That's so funny. I, I like he's he's lucked into perhaps like I don't think anybody has been more set up for success in the NFL than Baker Mayfield. Quite frankly, I, this this is like my I didn't even know he was on the Buccaneers. <laughs> you had Odell and Jarvis Landry and like every fucking wide receiver on the planet on the Browns. You couldn't do it. Had <laughs> the Rams on the back half of the season. Couldn't do it. Flashes with, again, already a very established offense. The Panthers, I agree that he didn't really have anybody to throw to, but he also played like shit. <laughs> they completely revamped the franchise and then traded him to the Rams, rather. He, in garbage time NFL, got a, a couple of good sessions in, and he got lucked into the already built for success franchise of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First regular season That's start for the insane. Bucks after living the nomad life. This is a more interesting game in my head now. I actually like he is life. for sure the like an X factor is almost like an understatement for Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, if he plays good, they win. If he does not, they lose. It is really just that simple. I don't know who their running back is. Shot White still, and then I, do they not have Fournette still? I don't know. That, it is really it is really Really an interesting game. I'm gonna give it to the Vikings, but it's gonna be close. I'm gonna say it's like 21, 20, 28. It's gonna be like the a one touchdown game. Colts, Only NFL. one person going bust. I think I think Baker could do it. I just am not gonna bet on Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Even with every wide receiver on the planet, we've been proven that that's not dashes. worth it. The Speaking Tennessee of the Rams, road warriors to start 2023 in New Orleans, taking on the Saints. It's more than just a new paint job. Oh fuck! Didn't Colin Cowherd say like fucking Derek Carr was gonna be like the greatest <laughs> quarterback since fucking sliced bread? Jesus Christ! Because that's how old that take is <laughs> yeah i like michael thomas i think Derek Carr is gonna have an okay season on the saints especially with lave uh it looks like i guess jawan johnson i don't know if they beat the titans the titans are a sleepy team i i don't know who's the quarterback of the titans which is what i'm going on to check i honestly like the titans a lot they're a team that people don't think about They've been a playoff team. I think if they still have Derrick Henry, which to my knowledge they do, the Saints, I'm worried, quite frankly. And if I'm a Titans fan, I'm worried about Ryan Tannehill, <laughs> Tannehill quite frankly. Uh, but with DeAndre Hopkins uh, into that mix, you got a number one wide out. Man, how are like, how is there not a <laughs> Traylon Burks I love too? Uh, Chigo Okonkwo. That like they're so good. Uh, it's it's gonna be Titans, but the Saints are gonna lose very closely. I think they're gonna have a well gelled team, uh, but just they're not gonna be able to do it. I'm gonna go Titans twenty four, Saints fourteen, maybe maybe twenty one. MJD doesn't want to pick this one. <laughs> I, I'm still gonna stick with it. The buyer people fucking with the Saints so heavy. San Francisco against the Steelers. This is another one that I'm gonna have to skim and find out the offenses. I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. Nick Bosa, obviously gonna continue exploding, continue being great. Kenny Pickett, as a starting quarterback, needs the help, but could get the help. He was someone who I think, like, if he was on the Jets last season instead of Zach Wilson, kind of like my, my barrier for success is like, <laughs> would you be as bad as Zach Wilson? I mean, granted, not the most help. I'm the Jets, I still... 
am lacking a number one wide receiver. Any franchise, I'm looking for a number one wide receiver so as to demand double coverage and free up somebody else who I know is capable. That's why the Dolphins are so effective, and that's why I wanted the Dolphins to keep Waddle so bad. You're going to double Tyreek Hill every time. You have to. Uh, and by consequence, Waddle gets to fucking explode, and Tyreek will still do some shit because he's still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. You need that kind of wide receiving core for someone like Kenny Pickett, or even someone like Tua. Without a running core, and I like Najee Harris, but like without like uh, a running core or like an established go-to set on this franchise, while nobody really jumps off the page of the 49ers, and I don't think Brock Purdy is necessarily also as great as people are saying. Story's cool. He has uh, not to compare him to Colin. Kaepernick. I love Colin Kaepernick. Obviously, I don't know where Brock Purdy's from, but I would imagine it's like he's from Bumblefuck, Alabama or something. Queens Creek, Arizona. Very close. I don't know what he knows politically. I don't want to do anything to compare that man to an actual political activist who deserves praise. Something that happened with Colin Kaepernick in the NFL, and again, I'm, I'm old enough to remember it. Also, like, there's people in the NFL who are rotating in and out that staple people then that aren't staple people now, right? Alex Smith was the big change rotating guy around this time, right? Alex Smith was the starting quarterback of the 49ers that were going all the way to a Super Bowl where there was a blackout against the Ravens. At that time, he got injured on the playoff push, kind of similar to how Brock Purdy was introduced into the 49ers. Colin Kaepernick was introduced after Alex Smith got hurt, right? Alex Smith went on to stay benched for the rest of that season, while Colin Kaepernick kind of exploded in the playoffs, had a decent next season, fizzled once people stopped trying to utilize him, it seemed like. I didn't think Colin Kaepernick's talent ever expired, you know, but it seemed like people wanting to utilize his talent expired. Brock Purdy, to me, is on a similar trajectory, where it's like, these numbers look fantastic, but he played three games, <laughs> really, or a couple of games in the playoffs. People now have footage on this guy who they didn't know about. He's gonna have a real big mountain to climb. This is a very storied franchise. I don't think they're gonna like fall off the map. I don't think he's it personally. Christian McCaffrey is gonna do more than enough to keep this team comparable. I think Brock Purdy was also somebody who like if I'm the Jets like he might have been enough. Defenses did not care about that man and didn't really know what to do about that man. But we've seen it so many times that I think it's it's too easy to buy into that hype. And I think if you're gonna do it against anybody, it might be against Pittsburgh and Kenny Pickens, you know? I'm gonna give it to the Steelers, but it's gonna be very close. I'm just gonna give it like 28-21 style game, but in favor of Pittsburgh. I think Kenny Pickens does enough. I think this game blends into the mix, but I think Rock Purdy crumbles under the defensive pressure. MJD's going 49ers, huh? It is, it is long doing this. I promise it won't be this long next time. The only reason I'm taking this long is because there's more prediction, obviously, in week one. I'll have stats to go off of in the future <laughs> for, like, these rosters. The Arizona Cardinals are off to Washington for week. Cardinals have been selling shop recently. That's shocking to me. DeAndre Hopkins, I obviously, we just talked about. It's kind of sad, man. I, I I think Kyler's great. I don't think he's the issue. I think the commies are going to fucking explode, though. I think the commies are a great team right now and a team that people aren't going to think about. But right, I'm sorry, if I'm remembering correctly, their quarterback is Taylor Heineke. Which finally, no, he's on the Falcons. And he's not starting? That's fucked. Why can this man never start? This man's been playing good football. Sam Howell, and you're not gonna start Jacoby Brissett. I like Sam Howell, don't get me wrong. He seems like a young, mobile, new prototype style quarterback. Man, if the Arizona Cardinals weren't shipping everybody off, I th I, it's interesting. Jacoby's sitting back there. If Sam Howell can stay healthy, uh, I think he's like a, a quarterback that people aren't concerned about. And he's basically like a rookie to me, right? Because he didn't play last year, really. And I think he really did fit their offensive system. It's It was like a, a big oversight. I'd have stuck with Taylor Heineke. I do like Jacoby Brissett, though. But I think he's the Brock Purdy story of this year. You know what I mean? Like, again, we see it every year. Someone drafted, like, really late round that nobody is thinking about kind of always explodes. I would give that to Sam Howell this year, because I think between Terry McLaurin I mean, Jahan Dotson as well. They're a young team, a team that people aren't necessarily staring at. Obviously, like, Carson Wentz was, like, their option last year, and that did not work out. Like, they couldn't settle on somebody, so so long as they can settle on somebody. But I think with Jacoby Bissett sitting behind, it's going to be a little rough. And Joshua Dobbs starting, I think also crazy, but... I think is the nail in the coffin of like, I think the Cardinals are the worst team in the league this year, potentially. We're the Texans. I like Joshua Dobbs, but there's a lot of footage on Joshua Dobbs and he, he played well.
well recently, I think he gets caught up again too. It doesn't just like you get NFL tested and then from that first day on, you you know how to play football in the NFL. It's not like that. People who are NFL tested, like Jacoby Brissett, for instance, have seen multiple teams, multiple defenses. It's like having work experience or having like just entered the field. No, dude, I've been to a couple of teams. I've been in a couple of offenses. I know how to how to change and do what I'm doing. Work for you guys is what you need. And I don't know that Joshua Dobbs has that. And he's definitely not somebody who you necessarily build around either if you're the, the Cardinals. The commies fucking slap up the Cardinals, especially when you get rid of Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy would have been awesome to have like a farewell tour in Arizona. I, I think the commies uh, like stomp on him. It might even be higher scoring. 31 to like mm. 7. Uh, that that's fucking rough. I, I I would hate to be an Arizona fan. I would hate to be living in Arizona right now anyway. <laughs> Justin Fields got shit on so much last year. I think this man is better at football than people think. For whatever reason, people are like shitting on this man in like NFL room. He's honestly like a new prototype so long as the offense can still remain built around him. Honestly, I just don't think that scheme was his doing. I think the Bears are a team. People aren't necessarily thinking about how great they'll be, but I think they're going to be very, very good this season that said the Packers have one of the best running offenses in the NFL Justin Fields is going to figure it out this season 100% does he have the talent to throw to is kind of what I'm trying to find out with Jared Alexander I think you might get swallowed up Darnell Mooney I like but like he's clearly not your number one option Cole Komet I really do like other than him being able to blend in a little bit I, I just wish the Bears were more focused on building their offense quite frankly these are all like depth options to me um I'm still gonna give it to I think the Bears squeak out a win against the Packers with Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love is a better long-term situation than Justin Fields. I think the Packers get very, very close, but like the Bears kind of like went on some juju. I think they're their home team as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I'm going to give it to the Bears, but I think it's going to be a close game. I, I really do. I, I don't think that the Packers are a bad team. I think Jordan Love is going to be the X factor. I've been saying this a lot about a lot of people. It seems like quarterback situations are like slim pickings in the NFL right now, and you don't normally see that. I think a new era of quarterbacking in the NFL, which is nice to see, especially last year when you saw like Marcus Mariota getting shots and stuff. It's like they're they're really only willing to test like old veteran quarterbacks or like a brand new rookie pick. And I think it's all to sell jerseys, quite frankly. Sorry, uh, I think the Packers, it's got to gel without their, their main guy that they've had, and I think they'll be fine. I, I, I do genuinely think that Aaron Rodgers wasn't doing so much, but he was doing at least a little bit. Jordan Love is an X factor that could turn poor. Aaron Rodgers is an X factor that could like win you a game or like he's like not helped enough to, to win you a game. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily his fault when, when they lose unless he's like throwing a shit ton of interceptions. Wow, not a lot of love for the Bears, huh? I guess I could expect that, but I actually was about to say it's about this score for me, 27-20, but in favor of the Bears. Las Vegas, Ra Vegas without Derek Carr and then Denver, who I'm trying to even remember who the fuck. No, it's Russell Wilson and then your boy right there, which good for him getting out of retirement to want to try this shit out. I like Russ, but like, man, did Russ not have <laughs> any setup for success. I think he crashed on his face, whereas like Pete Carroll, on the other hand, like he literally snatched up Geno Smith and was like pretty good. Honestly, Geno Smith had like a career Mr. season, Raider. probably his best season in his career, career establishing season. Like he could get another starting look, in my opinion, because of Pete Carroll. Jerry Judy, very cool option. This is like a, the only reason I'm Luke on the Broncos is because I thought they were going to be good last year. I like, I drafted Russell Wilson in my fantasy league. I was like, man, this is going to be great. People aren't really thinking about how good this could be. Get a young rookie wide receiver, an established franchise. He's got people who are invested in him. He'll be able to get pull and get people. But I think he realized, because honestly, there were not really big name wide receivers in Seattle up until DK Metcalf. And like Tyler Lockett was always there, right? DK Metcalf is like a personality right when you're Russ and you're throwing to like Tyler Lockett your whole career you're like oh well I could do it with this Broncos wide receiving core and like this offensive line and it's like you can't I do think with a better offensive scheme that those wide receivers will fit that scheme which is the difference again I think Pete Carroll like picked strategically wide receivers that fit his scheme while they weren't big names they knew what to do in his system and were veterans in his system in a lot of respect but I do think that the Raiders win this through Josh Jacobs 
I think regardless of who their quarterback is, because again, Derek Carr was nothing surprising to me. Uh, I mean, Devontae Adams was great, was a big part of the Packers, ironically. I think the Broncos defensively are pretty good, um, but I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than given credit, has been snuffed out of every possible position. Does he do it on the Raiders? I don't know, but he's the type of person that needs to be on the Raiders, quite frankly. He's like a mid-serviceable guy, like I said. He's like someone who, if he went to the Jets, would have gotten it done. So with like Devontae Adams and a good tight end, like honestly, a pretty decent receiver receiving core very good running back i don't think jimmy garoppolo needs to be the focus like he was i'm gonna give it to jimmy i think i guess from what i just snuck in there i guess we'll just swap on over damn jeremiah and all these motherfuckers are the only people catching my vibe uh i agree with mjd i don't think it's gonna be that close of a game actually i think it's gonna be like 28 to like 13 but in favor of the raiders but why people are loving the broncos like this is actually surprising it's a, it's a, gonna be a close game i think it's probably gonna be a defensive game but i i really do think that the raiders are better than People are giving them credit. I am, alert. I am a Miami Dolphins fan. Whoop, 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 whoop. Dolphins fan alert. I do think we're going to win this game, though. Now, I do think that the Chargers have a good defense. I still think they lack identity. I think Khalil Mack is fucking going to be a problem. I think, honestly, their their D-line is going to be a problem. Um, but I think we're a better team than giving credit. I think Bradley Chubb is going to come with a lot of pressure. I think we could shut down Keenan Allen, who his health, I don't know if it's still in question. Speak of another fantasy problem for me. Mike Williams, in my opinion, obviously more than capable. I think, honestly, the Chargers just have a good wide receiving system. You know, like there is someone who you don't need the big names, but like they just can build you into being a good wide receiver, especially with someone like Keenan Allen to like teach. They have so the Chiefs kind of system, except they do have a number one wide receiver in Keenan Allen that has to be doubled. So they have a bunch of really serviceable number twos. They could win some games. I don't know if it's just pure hope, pure delusion, the idea that we're going to win our division anyway in our conference anyway but i do think that the dolphins win this game very marginally not low scoring but like 17 to 21 in favor of the dolphins i do All think that they have the Michael resources Davis to shut us down it, it, this is like actually a good game this is a good game of football i think both of these could be playoff teams chargers i, I don't love justin herbert but he's good he's not somebody who people are looking at and he's not somebody who gets credit he's good if keenan swallowed up i worry about their resources quite frankly the high scoring is crazy at mjd that guy's out of pocket with this one god these are all so high scoring i was i might be just a dumbass the new england Patri uh, patriots and the eagles i believe the eagles are going to slap up the patriots i'm just going to do a quick little skim obviously i don't think the eagles changed that much beyond already having aj brown and exploding <laughs> last season into like the stratosphere oh my god and i got deandre swift gross that's not good like how do you win the super bowl and get better it's not allowed you're not allowed to do that oh they got juju I forgot about that. And Devontae Parker from us. Shout out. I was trying to steal our sauce, even though you guys won multiple Super Bowls. I got Zeke. When did that happen? What? Mac Jones, I don't know if I love. The, the rest of their offense is good. I was about to be like, the Eagles wash them. I still think the Eagles beat them, but it's close. Fuck. I'm going to go like, this is actually, I think, a high scoring game to me. Even though Mac Jones is not it, between everybody involved, it'll happen. Eagles 35 and then like Patriots 28. Shout out to the one guy who's got to go. <laughs> the other team. Rams and the Seahawks. I think Pete Carroll is one of the better head coaches in the NFL and doesn't get a lot of love or credit that he deserves for the schemes that he builds. I think Geno Smith has had a career renaissance over there. That's insane stat line to be coming from Geno Smith, a guy who was chewed up and spit out by the state of New York after having one good football game. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and Jackson Smith and Jigba is crazy. If Geno Smith can keep it up, I love the Seahawks. Now, if people start figuring out Geno is another story. I think Geno is honestly just like a perfect scheme fit replacement for Russell Wilson. And at his age, he understands listening. <laughs> you know, he's not like the rookie that's like coming in early draft pick to run the state of New York. He's like the sense option coming into the state of Seattle to potentially win. There's no reason Geno Smith is still playing football if he's not trying to win and he's playing great. I'm like actually incredibly happy to see it, to see someone like him
him bounce back at this moment in his in time in his career. I think he has a ton of resources around him to do really well. He's a great running team, great wide receiving core. Cooper Cup being questionable play is definitely not good if you're uh, the Rams. It's still Matt Stafford, huh? Oh, he got hurt last season is what it was, I guess. Who's their backup? You're, you're sinking it all. This guy got hurt for the whole last season and Baker got a job off of it. And you go, let's not even get a second quarterback. <laughs> I hope Matt Stafford stays healthy. I like Matt Stafford a lot, but his health, I feel like, has always been a question, if I'm not mistaken. Since Game the Lions spit him up and shoot him out like the Bengals are trying to do to Joe Burrow, etc. I think the Seahawks spank the Rams, especially if Cooper Cup doesn't play. If Cooper Cup plays, it's close. As long as Stafford is healthy and the same as he was two seasons ago. If he was the same as he was last season, or if he gets hurt like he did last season... But I think it's interesting because the Chargers, I think, are then becoming the better team in LA. It's like someone's always drawing revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about what I would have expected. I do think it's like 35 to 21 or like something super high scoring. 32 to 21 is interesting. I just don't even know how that stat line would come up to suggest it. How, who am I to be like, yeah, they're going to score 32 points. There's going to be multiple field goals. And Dallas and Giants, obviously a big rivalry matchup in New York. Without Zeke, but with Dak, I'm very interested interested especially with the new offensive line situation sorry offensive coordinator situation and cd lamb and like all these old pieces but like just a new guy to fit into it i feel like that works less than hiring the guy and then drafting the people as opposed to like hiring the guy to fit the people that already exist right i think brandon cooks will explode i think dak is honestly quite equipped for success i hope he got paid i don't remember okay yeah good <laughs> again another guy whose health was fucking thrown into question because of some greedy people who never see the football field i think the cowboys are, are very good i think daniel jones is a, a fly under the radar quarterback but it's on the rest of the pieces on the giants to make that shit happen. I think Saquon's cool. I think the Giants have okay options. I think the Cowboys spank them. I think it's like 35, 28 Cowboys. Uh, it's it's hard to bet on the Giants. I don't think they're terrible. Buffalo All right, Bill. last one, Monday night football game. The Bills are going to spank the Jets. I like Aaron Rodgers. I don't think he's it. I think he needs a number one wide receiver to draw attention so he can focus on his like little side options like Randall Cobb. I like Garrett Wilson. I like Alan Lazard. It's funny that like he's getting all these former uh, pack options that he likes over here i think that's good offense where it's like let's get a lot of number two wide receivers around and see what works the jets defense will always be fantastic i think aaron Rodgers probably struggles against that defense frequently i think they're a number one wide receiver away from being potential best team in the nfl but i think they lose to the bills this is a very intense division all of a sudden with the bills the jets and the dolphins but and even i guess zeke now being in here with the patriots it's it's a very intense time to be in the the afc east i think the jets defense Defense will hold up, but I don't know that Aaron Rodgers realizes the task of what's at hand and the amount of attention he's going to garner for such. I think it's close, uh, but I think the Bills win like 21 uh, 17. Wow, a lot of high scoring. Like, people have no love for the Jets defense. I'm the only one who has the Jets scoring 17 points. It's crazy. If you guys like this, let me know. I'll do a I'll do a weekly recap followed by, obviously, like, the next week's predictions. If you guys like this, obviously, they won't be as long in the future and these will be way headed down, but this is like two hours, an hour and a half of recording for me. So you guys might get some, some chipped up stuff <laughs> elsewise. I apologize. Be well.